Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Terrific flyover in Jacksonville as part of the salute to service ahead of Falcons and Jaguars getting close to kickoff. Before we kick this one off, we welcome in Laura Oakman. Hi, Laura. Hi, Kevin. Trevor Lawrence admitted there's always hesitation when going into something new like the NFL and a new team. And that negative voice in your head that says, maybe I can't do this. But he said nobody ever talks about how you deal with that voice that makes you doubt yourself. His head today said, Trevor, after playing really well in some games and really badly in others, I'm proud that it hasn't changed how I view myself. I feel really good about where I am as a player and a person. Now we just need to win. Well, and that's the big challenge this year for the Jaguars at 2-8. and eight. Arthur Smith in his first season as Falcons head coach at 4-6. and 3-2 and two on the road trying to get that fifth win against Urban Meyer, who is in his first season one of three coaches in their first year with a 2-8 and eight record, trying to get his team fired up for this one. Jacksonville won the toss. They have elected to defer, so it's going to be Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons who will start with the football first. We are ready to get this football Sunday on Thanksgiving weekend underway. Happy belated Thanksgiving to you and yours as Avery Williams is the deep man and the short kickoff fielded at the 8-yard line. Williams, a little bit of a crease, and he drags tacklers out to the 32-yard line. Rayshon Jenkins with the tackle, and here comes Matt Ryan. Last two games, Mark Sanchez have not been good for the veteran quarterback. Well, there are two games that he'd like to forget and just throw out the window, which is just fine. I know he can do that because he's a veteran guy, like we said in the opener. Hey, this guy, he's seen everything under the sun. He knows exactly how to win games, but more importantly, how to lose games. He's got to eliminate some of these turnovers. Gets a big lift back with Cordero Patterson starting in the backfield. Keith Smith motioning into the eye. And on first down off the play fake. Ryan going through his progressions and has to check it down to Smith. And Keith Smith with the grab off the grass tops to the 38-yard line before Damian Wilson can make the stop. Same offensive line we have seen most of the season for this Falcon team. Jalen Mayfield really grabbing hold of that left guard spot. He was an offensive tackle in his days at Michigan. And the rest of that offense, Cordero Patterson being back, is a huge lift. But can they get production out of the wide receiver spot? No Calvin Ridley again as he tends to his mental health. They have really missed that production at wide receiver. Second and four, and we've got a stoppage in play, and flags fly. And we'll hear from Carl Cheffers for the first time today. Ball start, number 85, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Lee Smith getting the head start, and for this Jacksonville defense, a defense that's been right in the middle of the pack against the run and the pass, allowed 171 yards rushing against San Francisco, and the Jaguars trying to get things going. Now, last week in that San Francisco game, Niners got him with a long early drive. 20 play, 87 yard opening drive that resulted in a field goal. On second down, first carry for Patterson and nothing doing right into the arms of Miles Jack. The veteran from UCLA makes a big stop. You're gonna watch Miles Jack come from right here. Number 44, just hit him with a little run blitz. This is exactly what it's designed to do. Hit that backside B gap that's two gaps away from your center and executed perfectly. So now a third and nine. Jaguars crowd the line right now as Ryan will back into the gun. Four man pressure. Ryan floats it out short up the sideline and diving for the first down is Russell Gage and he gets just enough to move the chains. And just a quick little option route, you're going to see Gage move up and out and use those two outside receivers in Zacchaeus and Pitts to just try and get a natural pick for him. And well done. Just the extension at the end, understanding where the, uh, the, the first down marker is, that's great awareness from the wide receiver position, understanding the situation third and long. Down at the 42, Ryan, quick toss, finds Gage, who drops the football. Pass ruled incomplete, thrown right on him. Nevin Lawson jarred it loose, and it's second down. 
you'll see this hit, just a bang bang type play. Love to see him try and tuck that thing immediately, but the defense was on him quickly. Lawson, you see 21 applying the pressure as soon as he touched that football to separate him from the pitch. And this is really bad news for Jacksonville. That's Josh Allen that they're tending to. We'll step aside. The injury to Josh Allen, they were working on his right shoulder here, Mark. Yeah, it looks like he just collided with one of his own teammates in Damian Wilson. He's on the sideline now. We'll see if we see him back sooner rather than later. Off play action, Matt Ryan going to scramble, and Ryan stumbling down at the 49-yard line. That's a seven-yard scramble for a guy that doesn't do it a lot, but he got seven yards. Remember, he had that banged-up toe in the last game. They had basically they went through a mini a mini bye week because they had that Thursday night game uh, over a week ago had a little chance to get healthy but obviously Matt Ryan not known for his scrambling ability but you can tell the Jaguars know they want to keep the lid on this defense keep everything underneath them keep everything in front of them and if that's how Matt Ryan's got to beat you then so be it 12 straight games without a touchdown on the opening drive this is third and three Ryan quick toss to Patterson and a first down for the Falcons Miles Jack runs him out of bounds but a seven-yard pickup and getting Cordero Patterson back means so much to this Falcons offense. Oh, it's a huge lift for this offense. And Matt Ryan, he recognizes man coverage. He knows that we got guys in tight bunch formations. Again, that's two third downs in a row where they're trying to use natural pick lanes, basically let outside receivers pick for inside receivers or rub, as we like to call them on offense, because we never pick. No. Kevin. No, I know. These are all legal plays. I would never accuse anyone on offense of doing that. Thank you. First down, it's Mike Davis with the carry. Davis follows forward to the 39, giving five. And it'll be second and five as the Falcons try to get back on track. You know, at four and six with the expanded season and an expanded playoff, Atlanta very much in the NFC playoff picture. But for Matt Ryan, it's got to be more production than what we've seen the last couple of weeks. No touchdowns and four interceptions. No doubt he's got to flip those numbers. And they seem to be doing it here. They've struggled on third down all year. but. This drive already two for two, and they're taking their time methodically getting the ball down the field. Three for 22 in their last two games before today. No one to go this time for Mike Davis. Adam Gotsis, the former Georgia Tech star in his second year with the Jaguars, makes the stop. And you see a big 96 right here on your screen. The Aussie native, we're actually teammates together in Denver, but just a, a load up front and refused to get moved. And, and edged by the offensive lineman, Hennessy there, 61. Great effort play. This here's is another critical third down. This is this is where Atlanta has to be much better than they've been. Two for two on this drive. Three for 22 in the previous two games. Third and seven here. Ryan with pressure picked up, and he misses Davis. He had Davis open in the flat, scrambling over to try to corral him. A couple of Jaguars defenders and Andrew Wingard wasn't going to get there in time, but he just flat out missed it. This ball just got away from Matt a little. He just sailed it over. He's got his feet in cement. That's a that's a ball he normally completes. And obviously he wanted to go to his one on one matchup. Campbell says no way. I know exactly what you guys are doing. You're not going to get a jump ball over my head. But watch out. Here's Felipe Franks on fourth down. Franks under center. Now backing up. You weren't buying it. Number the Jaguars 15, weren't offense. buying it. Five yard penalty, four count. So back him up. They give him a little more room to punt. It makes sense. Jaguars defense all over it. A for effort though. Jadon Mickens is back awaiting what we assume will be a punt this time. Frank stays in. Mickens just signed off the Tampa Bay practice squad this week. He'll wave for the fair catch. 
just shy of the 15-yard line. Jacksonville's first offensive possession coming up in a scoreless game in Florida. From the 14-yard line, Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars offense going to work on first down. LaVisca Chenault, the motion man. Quick toss to Chenault. Chenault trying to get to the edge, and what Falcons all over that. He gets a yard, and that's about all. Atlanta defended that very well. So Trevor Lawrence, you've watched a lot of Trevor Lawrence over the last week getting ready for this game. What have you seen from the young quarterback? Well, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of good throws, and a lot of poor decisions, and that's normal for a rookie quarterback. The other thing, too, is I mean, my man's working with a lot of injuries on offense. He finally gets James Robinson back today, but he's got his work cut out for him with the lack of personnel. Second down, play fake. Lawrence on the roll, throws it short. Chenault with the catch. Charred out of bounds by Eric Harris, but a first down for Jacksonville. And he's so good at getting out on the move. I love the way they started off this game plan, especially for rookies, especially when you've lost three of your last four. Get him out on the move, throw a quick screen, get him to go two for two. Even if he's only got a couple yards passing, just give him a two for two start. Here's James Robinson, his first carry, bouncing to the outside and down at the 32-yard line, six-yard pickup on the play. As we take a look at this offense for the Jacksonville Jaguars, we've seen Brandon Linder on the shelf with a high ankle MCL spray. They're thrilled to have him back at center this week. They're also delighted to have James Robinson back. Can they find playmakers at the wide receiver spot? It's been a question that's been asked by Jaguar fans all season long. Second and four at the 32-yard line. And Robinson trying to lunge for yardage. He's stopped at the line of scrimmage by Grady Jarrett, who is such a force up front for Atlanta. There's Grady Jarrett, such a staple for this defense. Look at that quick swim move. For such a big guy, he moves so well. He's so slippery inside at 305, man. He's tough. He is tough to block. He just gets right through those gaps and makes plays in the backfield like you see. Goal will pick each of the last two years. For the Atlanta Falcons, third and four empty backfield now for Jacksonville. Four-man Falcons rush, Lawrence quick toss, catch made by Jones, and a first down, Marvin Jones moving the chains. A.J. Terrell with the tackle. And just a quick little out route from Jones in the slot. Watch him here, get up to the edge of the defender. Boom, quickly break off his route, and Trevor Lawrence with a strike in stride, leading him to the boundary exactly the way you teach it. Great footwork, great vision and a conversion for Trevor Lawrence. Offensive coordinator Darrell Bevel has given Trevor Lawrence some good, easy completions on this opening drive. I love that for his confidence. This isn't going to help his confidence as a left tackle Number turns off sides. Offense, Cam five Robinson. yard penalty, first down. And you got to be able to work your cadence in these situations. There's a flinch right here. It's a little early to the party. But those are things that are so important for a rookie to understand when you can use your cadence, when you can, and you hope mistakes like that don't affect your confidence and keep you using that cadence as a weapon. First and 15. Robinson trying to get to the edge. Nice move and a stiff arm as he's pulled out of bounds. Michael Walker with the stop. Eric Harris had a chance to get it, but he slipped right through him as we look at that defense, you've already seen Grady Jarrett make a play up front for the Atlanta Falcons. One big loss in the linebacking court, no Deion Jones. Showed up late on the injury report with a shoulder injury. That's why you'll hear the name Michael Walker today. And in the secondary, A.J. Terrell and Fabian Moreau manning the corners, trying to lock down these Jaguar wide receivers. But you saw in that last run, just that move in the backfield to avoid a negative play. That's why they miss guys like James Robinson. Second and 10 off the play pick. Lawrence looking deep down the left sideline and a little miscommunication looking for John Brown and 
Laura Oakman, it's hard to pinpoint just one area that's gone wrong this year with the Jags, but Urban Meyer knows one thing they've missed. And that's for sure. We're seeing why right now, right? He said when they lost James Robinson, the team lost the spark that he provided. How do you get that back, said Urban, by creating juice. We don't have that right now. How do you create juice? Plays, he said, energy, sacks, touchdowns. It's hard to create juice without all of that. They've got James back, and right now this first drive, it looks like a little juice is coming with him. But they need a little extra spark here on third and 10 at the 37. Carlos Hyde in as you saw James Robinson head to the sidelines. Lawrence on third down steps up into the pocket and incomplete. Chenault in the area, but Chenault looked back a little befuddled as he glared back at the quarterback and it's fourth down. Just a miscommunication on a little stop route here. You're going to see Chenault turn up and slam on the brakes. It looked like Trevor was expecting him a little farther outside. Nearly intercepted. It went right between two defenders, two Falcon defenders. But those are the miscommunications that lead to punts. And you saw right before that another miscommunication with their new receiver that they just signed off the street, John Brown, or activated from practice squad. It's really, really tough for a young quarterback with new weapons trying to figure out how to play this game. And we've also learned today why Matt Ryan is not a wide receiver. Receivers in Falcons history, the great Roddy White played his entire 11 year career in Atlanta, making four Pro Bowls. Most receiving touchdowns in franchise history, second in receiving yards, only trailing Julio Jones. And those are two names Roddy White and Julio Jones that Matt Ryan would love to have in this offense right now. They have really struggled to get wide receivers on track as Cordero Patterson, once a wide receiver, now running back, carries it to the 23 yard line. Josh Allen who was on the sideline with that injury, is back in the ball game and he makes the tackle. Jaguars happy to have him back, one of the most productive players on this Jaguars defense, the 2019 Pro Bowler, who was a first round pick a couple of years back from Kentucky. His teammate's gotta fix his shoulder pad right there. That's <laughs> like teammate awareness. Second and six. Ryan looking. Nobody open. Going through his progressions again and finally sacked. Oh, a coverage sack by Roy Robertson Harris. His second sack of the season. Now watch this. They're just going to go with a little quick play action across the ball. They're going to try and get the ball to Pitts. But the most important thing is right here at the very end. Watch the top of your screen. Matt Ryan's looking across the board and they're just jamming up. Cordero Patterson right there. The D lineman's just holding on to him so he doesn't have a check down. And everybody was gloved across the board, so Matt Ryan had nowhere to go. An absolute covered sack. And great awareness by the D lineman to hold his check down. Third and 13. Blitz coming. Ryan in trouble. Flips it to Davis. Davis chugging forward. Is he going to get it up? He is. And a first down. And just the antithesis of the previous play. Watch this. Matt Ryan knows what to do when everything goes down. He's just going to find his halfback who's going to sneak right out in front here and catch this ball. But this is why you have to grab that check down guy and not let him sneak free because these are the kind of crafty little plays that number two still has in his bag with all that experience. Look at that. He just kind of shot put it to him. However you can get it there, he can make it pay. Rudy Ford had a Bead on Matt Ryan, and he was able to get rid of it, get the first down. Here's Cordero Patterson, gaping hole on the left side, and Patterson out of bounds with a first down at the Jaguar 48 as we check in for the first time in Los Angeles with Chris. At the tail end of that last run, you saw Patterson walking a little gingerly. We'll see how long he can go in this contest. They sure missed him in the last couple weeks. They'd hate to see him. Be down for the rest of this thing. Now Wayne Goldman in now for Cordero Patterson. He's been battling that ankle injury this last week. Goldman in there now. Good run by Wayne Goldman, the former Giant, into the secondary and down to the 32 yard line. A pickup of 15. But let's go back to Patterson in this ankle again. We well, see him getting towards the end of this run, trying to get out of bounds, and the safety went right after it unintentionally, but he's just trying to get him down. But Patterson grabbed for it right away and then called in for. For Gallman to come bring in the reliever. You see him limping gingerly, walking gingerly on that uh, 
on that right ankle. Big plays though, the last three, 18 yards, 19 yards, 15 yards, eating up yardage and chunks on this drive of the Falcons. Here's Goldman on first down, not much there. A yard for Wayne Goldman brings up second down. scored a touchdown on their opening drive in a long time. Jaguars now nine straight games. Falcons 13, but the second drive, much better for Atlanta as they've got it second and nine at the 31. Off the play thing. Ryan over the middle, sticks it right into the chest of Tajay Sharp, who has a first down at the Jacksonville 18-yard line. But leading up to this second down call, they've run the ball so well, and you're going to see Tajay Sharp get all the way across the screen and watch Matt Ryan hold his eyes, hold his eyes, and wait for that final window just past Miles Jack. The anticipation of that throw to get it past Miles Jack and before the corner was just a complete veteran move. Absolute dime. Cordero Patterson is back in. Tajay Sharp went to the sideline after that catch. Here's Patterson on first down. Has a hole. Patterson with another first down to the seven yard line. And a first and goal coming up for the Falcons as he gets 11. This offensive line is really starting to move. Jacksonville's front seven really starting to push him out of the way in their zone scheme and then eventually get up to the second level where the linebackers are and provide some space for Cordero Patterson, who really hits that hole hard. On first down, Patterson again, trying to chug to the outside, diving for the pylon, touchdown, Atlanta! <laughs> Following Jake Matthews around the left side. And what a stud Jake Matthews has been for this team for a while now. Well, let's see if that left, yeah, he's in there. I think he's in there, but you can see there's just a tiny little hitch in his giddy up with Cordero Patterson. Credit to that guy for fighting through that injury and still has enough juice to circle this defense. It looked like he was going to try and hit it up inside and then decided last minute, I'm breaking contain. I'm on my own. <laughs> when I'm on my own, I got to dive for that pylon and make this thing count. Young Way Koo with the extra point, and it's 7 0 Atlanta. We'll be right back after this message from very clear what it means to have even a 70% Cordero Patterson in the backfield for this Atlanta offense. Well, you see him, he was eyeing that hole right there and then decided to take this thing outside and follow Jake Matthews, their stud left tackle. Look at that effort. I mean, you can't tell me this guy doesn't want it. You know, I mean, they're, this is an, an easy opportunity for guys. Who didn't have the who don't have the mentality that he does that killer instinct to just kind of bow out, you know, and I've seen it through the years in the NFL. You see what people are really all about. And that's what Arthur Smith is trying to find out who's with us, who's really in for it, who's, you know, got that ride or die mentality and who can hang when things get tough. Because this first year as a head coach, that's what it's about. Weeding out the guys that aren't going to contribute in the future. Clearly, number 84. Is on that list of good players that wants to help. Jadon Mickens will bring it out of the end zone. Mickens, a little hurdle, and ends up just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, for Trevor Lawrence, let's compare him to number one overall picks over the last few years. And you see the rating much lower than Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield in their first 10 career games. And unfortunately for Trevor Lawrence, when you dive deeper into the statistics, it doesn't get a whole lot better for the first round pick out of Clemson. Well, listen, when you're drafted number one overall, you're generally there for a reason. And that's because you've had a couple of tough losing seasons. And that's part of part of the issue here is the lack of players, the lack of talent. Robinson on first down. Moves forward to the 34 yard line. Good run on first, might be the final play of quarter number one as he picks up six yards. Patterson trying to stay loose on that Atlanta sideline. And the, the mental gymnastics of a rookie quarterback, I think, you know, their, their psyche is so fragile, especially a guy who's won his whole life and now he's lost more games in this first season than he has in his entire career in football. But we'll see what else we have coming back after this. Atlanta up 7 0.
Seven nothing Atlanta, which means for the 40th consecutive game, the Jaguars find themselves trailing at some point in the game. It's the seventh longest streak by any team since 1930. They're still a long way from the record. The record is 74 games. Denver trailed in 74 straight games in a span from 1962 to 1967. I mean, what Jacksonville has gone through, trailing now 40 consecutive games at some point during the game, is awful. But imagine being a fan of the Broncos in the 60s, when for 74 straight games you looked up and at some point in the game your team was losing. Little tempo now for Jacksonville, and a hole for James Robinson on third and short. Loops out to the 46, where he gets nine in a first down. He must have heard you. <laughs> said, hey, man. We want to break this streak. I'm tired of this. Well, it's too late. They're already trailing. I'm tired of this losing. So it's trailing at It's trailing at any point. Game. Like if you're down I don't three know. nothing, you don't like that? I'm still out on that stat, sorry. Okay. I, I don't love it. We've been arguing about this all week long. We interrupted our Thanksgiving meals to argue about this stat. First and ten at the 46. Lawrence. And the toss. Arnold, who didn't get a target last week. They get him involved. And look at he fights his way for nine yards to the Atlanta 45. That's why Urban Meyer said we cannot leave him targetless again this week. And I love the quick game. I love Trevor's footwork. Just a quick little step and bounce. And another strike on these quick game throws, keeping him on track and on pace to continue to stack completions and build his confidence. And unfortunately for the Jaguars, Dan Arnold is down after this play. We'll step aside in Jacksonville. It's 61 degrees. You'll notice that only children are in the pool here in Jacksonville because it's chilly. Most of the time during the break, we watch them. They're huddled together for warmth, Mark. <laughs> Kids will get in the pool anytime. I know I'd be in there. <laughs> Second down at a yard. Robinson finding space and finding the first down. That's why they're so happy to have James Robinson back. He finds areas that are open that other Jacksonville backs just haven't found. Well, he's such a lift for this offense. And you saw him, I mean, it did, there wasn't just some gaping hole, but you nailed it, Kevin. He finds ways to get positive yardage and keep this team on schedule and move the chains. Dan Arnold got up, got to the sideline under his own power. We'll update you when we have an update on the status of the Jaguars tight end. First down and 10, Robinson again. And Robinson down to the 35, getting three. Michael Walker on the stop. Try to add a little weak side counter on that with two pullers in front of him. They're really riding James Robinson as long as they can. And just trying to steal as many yards to get into a third and manageable. But I love where Trevor Lawrence is at, throwing the ball on the run. Uh, Coach Bevel, Coach Mar uh, Brian Schottenheimer, son of Marty Schottenheimer, and my former coordinator, are, are really harping on his vision, his footwork, and stacking completions early in the game, and he's done that so far. Second down, Lawrence with backside pressure, able to step away, looking deep into coverage, and it's intercepted and out of bounds. At the one goes to Ron Harmon. It's the 10th interception of the year. If it stands, there is a flag down at the 42-yard line. I don't know. I don't. Illegal formation, offense. Number 11 covered another eligible receiver. A penalty's declined. Result of the play, interception, first down Atlanta. Timeout. I thought it looked like he thought he had a free play because watch Dante Fowler on the bottom of your screen. You're going to see Dante Fowler move just a little bit. But the problem is the receiver here, you see him, you see the receiver throw his hand back right there. That wasn't any, that had nothing to do with the defense. It was him trying to tell the referee, hey, I'm in the backfield. I'm lined up off the ball because he realized he covered up the tight end. But when he threw his left arm back, he was trying to motion to the side judge and let him know, hey, man, I'm off. Count me off the ball. I'm not covering this guy that I'm actually covering. A little too late. And unfortunately, Trevor got screwed up there and thought he had a free play. So Matt Ryan will just sneak to try to get a little breathing room for this offense. And it's second down. First interception in the last 137 pass attempts for Trevor Lawrence. But you're exactly right, Mark. He thought he had a free play, so he wasn't maybe as concerned about where it ended up because he thought it was going to be five yards free. Exactly. And that's what you're taught to do 
as a young player, hey, as soon as you get that free play, it's bombs away, man. Find your deepest target and chuck one up to him. The worst thing that can happen is getting a free five yards, and unfortunately, he just got the wrong message there and led to an interception. Second and nine, Mike Davis in the backfield. Play action. Ryan with time, nowhere to go with it. Now over the middle, he finds his check down and a minimal gain for Parker Hesse as he gets out shy of the nine yard line, brings up third down. Miles Jack on the stop. And he was trying so hard, Matt Ryan that is, to get to Kyle Pitts, who was streaking across the field. But he had multiple sets of eyes on him in the Jaguars linebacking court and secondary. They got an APB out on number eight on offense. They know exactly where he's going to be at all times. They did a great job of covering him up and forcing Matt Ryan to get to his check down. He's in the slot to the bottom of your screen. If you're wondering where Kyle Pitts is, the Jaguars certainly know. Third and three at the nine. Ryan in trouble, dumps it short. Davis nowhere to go. Boy, great pressure by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Nothing gained on the toss to Davis, and Atlanta will have to punt it away. They're trying to just run a little pick game for him inside and let Pitts run to the outside. But nothing going. I mean, Campbell's all over it today. He's just staying on top of Pitts and ready to react to those back shoulders that Matt Ryan likes to throw to him with his big body, catching radius, long arms, the whole package. But credit to Campbell, number 32 on the defense. And did the Jaguars just move on fourth and three? Laurenti McCray, I believe, was offside. You see a jump right there. And he couldn't scoot back. Neutral zone infraction, number 55, defense. Five-yard penalty. That yardage results in a first down. It's going to show up, Mark, as a five-yard penalty when you look at the box score tomorrow. But these are the kind of plays that two and eight teams make. Oh, no doubt. And their season has been highlighted, unfortunately, low-lighted, rather, by plays like this. And when you give any team in the NFL, I don't care what their record is, an extra opportunity in a free third-down conversion, fourth-down conversion, it can come back to bite you. First and 10 at the 14. Here's Cordero Patterson. Patterson with the hole. Patterson on the run. Patterson across the 40 and finally pulled down at the 41-yard line. Campbell and Lawson caught him after a 27-yard run. And watch Rayshon Jenkins. He's got outside contain. He's going to come from off your screen to on your screen. Number two right there. He's the one who has to contain this, this ball right there. And Cordero Patterson felt it, made his cut, saw the hole, and then made him pay. Longest run of the season for the Falcons. And remember, this drive should have been over. From the 41-yard line, Patterson again. Up the middle, backs for four to the 45-yard line. Now watch these wideouts. Look at Tajay Sharp right here. Just opening up a hole inside, and then Cordero Patterson cutting right off of his back. Carol Patterson, this offense runs through him and Kyle Pitts. He's got seven rushes for 72 yards on an ankle that's a little sore. Wow, what an effort by this guy. Mike Davis in right now as Patterson will get a breather. Play action. Davis stays in to pick up Ford. Ryan, nowhere to go with it, has to throw it away. Really good coverage downfield for most of this first half by the Jaguars. Matt Ryan's had no options. And when you get an earned first down on offense, right, you convert. They seem to go to this play action look all the time. And they love these mags and stings and strike routes, which are basically hard play action sell, run blocking up front, and quick little routes, crossing routes, you know, 10, route, 10 yard basic routes for these receivers. And Atlanta's gone to that well a few times, and Jacksonville is not buying on these fakes, and they're keeping everything in front of them. Great coverage. Hits Spordell wide to the bottom of your screen. Patterson in the slot to the top side. That's where Ryan looks, and he just misses Cordero Patterson, who was a yard shy of the first down, had Nevin Lawson right on his hip. And see, this is a zone route. I think Matt Ryan was expecting him to go up and turn around. Instead, Cordero Patterson read it a little more like man and started to leak outside. 
if he runs up to the sticks and just turns around, gives him his numbers, and looks right back at the quarterback, he has the freedom to do that on a quick little stick route like that. I think he would have got the first down, but a miscommunication leads to another punt. Fourth and six, no movement up front this time by the Jaguars. Thomas Morstead driving Mickens back to the goal line. It'll sail over his head for the touchback. And Jacksonville back to work on offense, even on a chilly day. A few folks at the beach in Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence has had a terrific career leading into Jacksonville. 52 and two record as a starter in high school, won 41 straight games at one point, won the national title at Clemson, 34 and two as a starter, had just two games without a touchdown pass, but the NFL's a different beast. Two and eight record as a starter. Last three games does not have a touchdown pass as the interception today and starts this possession at the 20 yard line. From the 20 yard line on first down. Lawrence checks it down to Robinson who gets six. And let's check in once more with Laura Open and Laura. Trevor Lawrence has gotten a lot of advice, but one from a familiar person to all of us at Fox. And we asked him, who's been an important voice in your head? As he told us, he was fighting the negative voices. He said, Hall of Famer Troy Aikman. Before their game in Cincinnati, he saw Troy on the field and said, he was such a calming voice for me because he was in a sim similar situation going winless his rookie season. Troy told him, don't panic. It's all going to work out. It may not be this week or next week. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, that's great advice. And you're right, Troy Aikman. 0-11 in his career in his first year as a starter. Ball pops out at the end of this Robinson run. And it's going to be Atlanta football. Robinson coughs it up and the Falcons recover. Anthony Rush looked like he jarred it loose, and Marlon Davidson at the bottom of the pile, the former Auburn Tiger, comes up with a loose ball. The helmet of Anthony Rush knocked it out. Back-to-back -back turnovers by Jacksonville. This one especially jarring inside their own 30-yard line. A heads up play, heads down play, I guess you would call it, but he put his <laughs> the front of his that Rydell sticker right on his football there that he was carrying those are tough to hang on to when a big fellow like that comes barreling into the ball heads down play say that on the sideline for the heads down play first down ryan on the sprint out trying to force it into kyle pitts who has been blanketed today this time by andrew wingard and it's second down and for Atlanta, the offense has been number 84, Cordero Patterson. And in fact, Cordero Patterson has been the offense for both teams today. Cordero Patterson has 79 yards. Jacksonville is a team with 73 yards, underlining the importance of Cordero Patterson to what this Atlanta offense is. And without him last week, they did not score. Yeah, we're feeling that one-dimensional offense right now through 84. They're trying desperately to get this ball to Kyle Pitts as they try it on the run. They're doing everything they can. Jacksonville's doing a great job in coverage. Delayed blitz, Ryan standing in. Ball batted away by Tyson Campbell. Four straight incompletions for Matt Ryan as we check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Bucks down 3 0 in Indy off a of Colts fumble. Leonard Fournette changes that. One yard score. His first since week seven. Bucks up 7 3. Kevin. Carissa, thank you. Here, Matt Ryan and the Falcons trying to cash in on the second Jacksonville turnover. NFC South, Panthers and Dolphins locked up at seven apiece. Buccaneers, 7-3 advantage over the Colts. Falcons trying to move to five and six and get right back in the playoff conversation. Third and 10 at the 30. Jaguars bring pressure again. Ryan checks it short. Catch made by Russell Gage who goes in on board and then is hammered down. Tyson Campbell got him up in the air and Dewan Smoot finished it. Excellent blitz pickup, gave Matt Ryan the ability to throw this shallow cross going across the field. You see Gage turning this thing into a high hurdle track beat and just gets smacked at the end of it. That's the risk you take getting airborne like that with other guys like Smooth in the vicinity. Young Way Kuan for the 43 yard field goal attempt. 
couple game winners for the Falcons. Be fun to watch. And the field goal is good. But hold on, the flag is down. So 10 nothing for the moment. We'll wait to see what Carl Cheffers has to say. Matt Ryan starting to walk back out onto the field. And Arthur Smith says, I want the first down. They're going to take points off the board here. Unsportsmanlike conduct leverage on the defense, number 95. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal automatic. First down. It's Roy Robertson Harris had a sack earlier. Watch him get leverage here. You can't do this. Can't go over the down lineman in an attempt to block the field goal. He's right in the middle of that pile, and he's the guy going up high. You can't do that. Jackson DeVille not thrilled. See that. Now first down and 10 at the 12-yard line. A second time that a penalty has extended a Falcons drive in this first half. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line. This is Cordero Patterson right up the gut. And Cordero Patterson into the end zone for his second touchdown of the first half. And watch Keith Smith. Number 40, the fullback. You know, I love these fullbacks. Watch him make this block inside and spring this thing from the fullback position. Watch. Boom. What a stud. Doing the dirty work inside, clearing the path. Offensive lineman, double teams across the board, no pullers, just an easy duo play up front. And what a critical error on fourth down on that field goal that led to a touchdown. And now instead of a field goal, Young Way Ku tacks on the extra point. Penalty on a field goal try. Leverage called against Roy Robertson Harris. Unsportsmanlike conduct turns into a touchdown for Cordero Patterson and a 14 0 lead for Atlanta. I think the Falcons are happy to have Cordero Patterson back. 84 yards rushing and two touchdowns in the first half. This touchdown coming after a penalty against the Jaguars. Unsportsmanlike conduct with leverage. And then Robinson, who had fumbled to give them position in the first place, they end up with a touchdown after the field goal is taken off the board. Mickens will bring it from the goal line. Jadon Mickens to the edge, and Youngway Koo down there to make the tackle. Now, Mike Pereira is with us in our Fox Studios in Los Angeles. Explain the leverage call, Mike, and, and what happened here. Yeah, well, what the rule book now says is, is that you cannot use your hands, even if you're going through a gap in an attempt to block the kick. It's relatively new verbiage, but if you're going through a gap, if you use your hands to get through that gap in that attempt, then it is a foul. So really, in this case, it is the right call. All right, Mike Pereira, thank you very much. And it costs the Jaguars in a big, big way, as Trevor Lawrence will keep and Trevor Lawrence starts to the sideline and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A.J. Terrell chasing him out. It's one of the areas that Jacksonville's going to try to get Trevor Lawrence involved a little bit more is on designed runs and some RPO stuff for him, maybe more like he did in college. Absolutely, and they collapse that right edge on the top side of your screen. And Trevor Lawrence just saw the daylight. His read key really told him to hand it off, but there was nobody there, so he just took the ball. Got a few free yards. Second and three at the 34-yard line. Lawrence on the roll, throws it short. Catch is made by Chris Manhurts. The tight end with his fifth catch of the year and a first down across the 45. And you can't do this enough. If Trevor Lawrence is your quarterback, he's so deadly at throwing on the run. And when it's not there, he has the ability to run like we saw the play before and get you seven yards. So I love these easy completions. He's having a solid start to the game. Five of eight. They're just lacking opportunities, right? Because it, these drives are getting extended for Atlanta because of bonehead plays on special teams. 
by the Jaguars, so that's no fault to Trevor. First down at 10 at the 46 yard line. This is Carlos Hyde off the plate fake. Lawrence will roll to the left, throwing on the run, and he threw it between his two receivers. He had Michael Walker right in his face, Mark, who didn't bite on the play action. Well, they were trying to run a little corner route to their tight end. And the defense sniffed it out. They knew what was coming. They know how good of a thrower he is on the run. And Trevor just ditching this ball in the ground. But same thing. I mean, no harm, no foul. Trevor's out on the move. He makes a great decision and dirts the football when nobody's open. But it looks like they got too many guys in the huddle. They might get flagged for that one. Trevor, you saw him step out. <laughs> That's a great veteran move there for the rook. You got to step out of the huddle and allow only 11 guys in. So Cheffers doesn't throw the flag on. Second down. Lawrence off the play fake. Pressure coming. He's in trouble. Ball's out. And fortunately for Jacksonville, Chris Manhurts was still in the area. Dante Fowler, the former Jag, knocking it out of the hands of the current Jaguar quarterback. You see him getting that ball popped out there. What a play by the tight end to recover that thing. But this is what they missed in Dante Fowler, a guy who has a nose for the football, makes that extra effort at the very, very end to get a finger on it. See him number six right there on the left side of your screen. He is the strip sack artist too. Third one this year, third and 22 after the loss of 12. Lawrence, pressure coming, throws it short. Chenault looking for the first down the yard edge and Chenault's got it. A first down and more to the Atlanta 42-yard line. And look at Chanel on a shallow cross all the way across the field. And he's going to have some help on the front side. This is basically a service play for those other receivers to get out in front of him and block downfield on third and long. There aren't many. Ooh, Jeffrey Lawrence. All you young kids playing, playing quarterback as little kids. You sure you want to do this? <laughs> Holy moly. James Waters. Dropped him like a bad transmission. Golly. From the 42-yard line, it's Carlos Hyde with the carry. And Hyde down to the 34-yard line. So now Jacksonville, Mark, with a little momentum. They convert on a big third down. They get eight yards on a first down carry. But now they've got to figure out a way to finish this drive and put points on the board before halftime. No doubt, and I love that. Shadi and Coach Bevel are giving them opportunities on third and long to just get an easy completion on that shallow cross. And they designed it in a way for those receivers to spring LaVisca Chenault, their biggest threat in the wide receiver core, to keep this drive alive. Now it's going to come down to a crucial third and short. But you've got all your options open. I'd love to see Trevor either in a zone read or an RPO type game to give him a chance to convert it. Third down and one. It's a long one for the Jaguars. I in the backfield. Lawrence will keep. And Trevor Lawrence, as you called it, Mark Sanchez, gets the first down. Every once in a while, you know? Sounds like I know what I'm talking about. But this is exactly what Urban Meyer was talking to us about during the production meeting. There's nothing wrong with having some of these run tags here with the quarterback now. You got to be careful. He is your franchise. He is your future. So you don't want to go to that well too many times and expose him to too many hard hits. You saw the one he took in the backfield after releasing that ball on third down. So keeping his exposure on those big hits to a minimum is a priority. He's down and 10 from the 29 yard line. Play fake. Lawrence will check it short to Chenault. And Chenault finding nowhere to go. Richie Grant, the rookie from UCF was there to make the stop for Atlanta, and that takes us to the two-minute warning. Jaguars try to put points on the board before the break. Saturday, after finally beating Ohio State, Jim Harbaugh leads his fifth-ranked Michigan Wolverines into their first-ever Big Ten championship game, looking to punch their ticket to the playoffs against number 16, Iowa. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. James Robinson, since the fumble, has not played for Jacksonville. Second and 11, Carlos Hyde still in in the backfield. Three receivers to the top of the screen on second down. Lawrence with lots of time over the middle and a one-handed grab by Marvin Jones Jr. What a catch down at the seven-yard line. Oh, what 
a snag. Whoa. Looking like Spider-Man out there. That was impressive. There was a flag down. It's declined. It was against the Falcons defense. And so this counts. And what a catch by Marvin Jones Jr. They've been looking for playmakers. This is certainly I mean, a this, play. This is exactly what they're talking about. You hear the crowd. Now they're on their feet. There's a little momentum, a little juice in the stadium. That's exactly what Urban Meyer wanted. And Fabian Moreau had him covered, had him gloved. There was nothing else he could do. First and goal at the nine. Lawrence the swing. And oh, my goodness, does LaFisca Chenault Whoa. get blown up by Darren Hall? <laughs> Dropped him like a bad habit. We'll step aside in Jacksonville. What a hit from Hall. Jaguars looking for playmakers. Marvin Jones mm. Jr. trying to provide with a catch that sets him up first and goal. But Atlanta coming right back. And the rookie Darren Hall with a big hit on LaVisca Chenault to throw him back to the 11-yard line. Jacks getting things rolling, though, on this drive. 62 yards on the drive. They sure have in that last play before break with the big hit. It was an all-out pressure. Let's see if Atlanta is willing to go for it again and bring the house. Well, it's called timeout a moment ago. They have two remaining. Here comes pressure. Lawrence throws, and it's off the hands of Dare Ogunbowale. If he makes the catch, he's probably in for six. Well, he's got a free runner coming off the edge. You see Copeland, 51, right in his lap. And Trevor ditches this ball just a smidge early. Kind of catches the... Halfback off guard. First time we've seen Ogunbowale in the game, and he can't make the play. He sits down, Carlos Hyde back in. Still haven't seen James Robinson since the fumble. Third and goal at the 11. Lawrence facing a four man rush. He'll step up, throws on the run, caught at the five yard line, but cannot get in. Laquan Treadwell. Stopped at the four and a decision for Urban Meyer. It's fourth and goal at the four down two scores You get the football to start the second half. What do you do here? I mean, there's nothing to lose really going for it, right? I mean, what, what's the What's the worst thing that can happen you give the ball up here and obviously give it to Matt Ryan with a long field, but There's nothing to lose in my opinion you play these situations out and get your players most importantly number 16 your future franchise quarterback a chance to convert on fourth down. Remember, it's fourth and goal, right? They can't get a first down and get a new set of downs, so that has to factor into your decision. And a timeout used by Jacksonville. Carissa, what do you have coming up for us? Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Show, the fellows are in New York for Michael Strahan's jersey retirement, so Mike, Reggie, and I are holding down the fort. Can we build a fort, too? No. Can we play Fortnite? All right, I'm done with you guys. We'll see you at the half. Hey, I'm watching that halftime show. <laughs> I like that. Those dudes are on it. Chris is working hard today. Doing everything. Yeah, I in think Los uh, she's all over it. How about, I mean, this this offensive play, right? You asked what exactly would I do if I'm going to go for it, which I would be inclined to do. And it looks like the Jags aren't. Well, they're going to run their kicker out onto the field. So after the timeout, I don't disagree with you, though, Mark. I mean, two and eight. I get it. I, I, yeah, percentage-wise, maybe it's not the best with all the numbers. Obviously, the crowd doesn't love it. But I was going to say, just give them an answer. You've already seen all-out pressure twice. Then you saw coverage by Atlanta. I would give them an answer for all-out pressure, but have something maybe with Trevor on the move so it's built in. Just give them an opportunity. 22-yard field goal try for Matthew Wright. And now the Jaguars on the board, down 14 to 3. We'll be right back after this message from Verizon. This Black Friday, Verizon is doing it better, a lot better. Because right now, you can get iPhone 13 Pro on us. Just bring in your older damaged phone, and we'll give you the phone everybody wants on America's most reliable network. On any unlimited plan. Better? Better. And everyone gets up to $800 when they switch. OK, everyone say better. Black Friday better with Verizon because everyone, everyone, everyone deserves better. Shop online, in store, or call today. So a 14-play, 70-yard drive for Jacksonville that ends 
in a field goal to 550 off the clock. He had a huge play in the catch for Marvin Jones Jr. Oh, that's so good. And then you have a drop that would have been a oh, touchdown. A, yeah, he's walking in the end zone. And then you settle for the three. And this I understand. I, I get the the the, th the uh, thinking here by Urban Meyer. You can't go broke taking a profit. Keep your team in the game. You're going to get the ball in 45 seconds here at the start of the third quarter after halftime. That's all well and good. I, I understand. All I'm saying is, why not? What what's stopping you from taking a shot there and, and giving your quarterback a chance? Williams from the one. Williams not finding much room up that sideline. Stop at the 25 by Rudy Ford. Falcons trying to keep themselves in the picture. And of course, with the expanded playoffs and the longer season, there's a lot more teams in the picture at this point in the season. Atlanta with a win today moves to five and six, and then they're right in that conversation. You see Minnesota and San Francisco at five and five are actually in the playoffs if the season were to end today. So still so much football to be played, but Atlanta has a lot to play for right now. Ryan checks it short. Davis down to the 31-yard line. Pickup of seven on the play. They'll hurry up to the line. Still two timeouts remaining. Jags rush four. Ryan to the sideline, and it is intercepted! Tyson Campbell with his first Jaguar interception, and he may steal some points for Jacksonville at the end of the half. Matt Ryan trying to fit in a corner route to Kyle Pitts, and you're going to see the DB get a little more depth than he thought. There goes Campbell again. I mean, Campbell's been all over Pitts the entire day. When he's had him man to man, he knows exactly where he is, and he's kept him in front of him. And now in zone coverage, he baited Matt Ryan into throwing this corner route, snuck underneath it, and stole one for this Jacksonville team. And they're going to have 19 seconds to potentially take a shot here and get within field goal range. Maybe two quick plays. They still have two timeouts. So, I mean, half the field to go in 19 seconds with two timeouts. That's not impossible here. Let's see what Trevor Lawrence has for us. Lawrence, quick toss, and the catch made. Good adjustment by Marvin Jones, Jr. Timeout is used at the 41-yard line. Well, Urban Meyer called the timeout on the sidelines. I'm not sure that the message was relayed to the group just yet. Now they've got it, and they'll talk about this play second and one at the 41-yard line. Mark Sanchez, this is quite a turn of events. Atlanta took a timeout trying to borrow a little time for a late push at the end. And Matt Ryan throws an interception, and all of a sudden now the Jaguars with an opportunity. Oh, they have a huge opportunity here, and this is why Urban Meyer didn't go for it. Right? <laughs> Forget what I just said. Great call, Urban Meyer. He knew they were going to get an interception. He knew course. they were going to get a pick. Boom, we still got two timeouts in our back pocket. Boys, let's go get a chance to kick three points and go down 14-6 at the half. Who knew he knew about that interception? I guess the crystal ball is working again, so that's nice. Tyson Campbell gets his first pick. The second round pick of this little time this year with a toe injury. And now, from the 41-yard line, one timeout remaining. 15 seconds to work with. Matthew Wright's long field goal is 56 yards. So they're knocking on the door of his range. Lawrence, pocket collapsing, throws it away. O'Shaughnessy in the area, but it's third down and one. They have 10 seconds and a timeout to work with. They got a chance. Remember, because of the timeout, they can throw this thing anywhere. The line to get to, I mean, you'd love to get inside the 35. Closer to the 30 would be ideal as just a general rule of thumb, thumb regardless of your kicker. But a quick, you know, six, seven yard completion. And remember, they can spray this ball anywhere on the field in between the hashes, in between the numbers because they have that timeout. Third down. Lawrence pressure comes in trouble. Lawrence rolling, throwing down the sideline. It's incomplete. Three seconds remaining. Jaguars are fortunate that Lawrence was able to escape. And watch him get pressure and roll out to the right of your screen. Grady Jarrett almost had him, got a paw on him. 
just a little too much for his wide out. But really running down on the clock. Now they're going to have to just take a shot at the end zone. And now Atlanta will use a timeout. So Atlanta takes time with three seconds left in the half. Fourth down and one. No Matthew Wright on the field as long as I mentioned is 56. And it, it really was the right call by Shadi and Coach Bevel. They thought they were going to get man to man from Coach Dean Pease, the defensive coordinator from Atlanta, and they did. They had crossing routes streaking across the field, but credit to Atlanta, they just had them gloved. They ran with them like they were their shadow uh, right in the receiver's hip pocket. There was nowhere to go with the football, so Trevor did everything he possibly could and almost ran out the clock too long. So a 14 3 lead for Atlanta, and now Jacksonville will. Take one shot at the end zone on fourth down and one. Back deep right now. In the secondary for Atlanta is Cordero Patterson. He's standing at the goal line. Yeah, he's way back there at the goal line. He's ready for this jump ball they're about to throw. Fourth down. Pressure coming. Lawrence gets away from Fowler. On the run, can't set. He'll just throw a duck out of bounds to avoid the sack, to avoid the turnover, and to avoid any damage done. Halftime has arrived in Jacksonville. And our first half stats are brought to you by State Farm. Matt Ryan, 9 of 16, 72 yards. That pick at the end. Trevor Lawrence, 12 of 20, 104 yards, and an interception as well. End of the first half, our score, Atlanta 14, Jacksonville 3. Stay tuned, the Verizon Halftime with Carissa Thompson, Michael Vick, and Reggie Bush right after these messages. For this offense, and he's doing it essentially on like one and a half legs here. I mean, that ankle, you can see him in between drives, in between plays, hobbling, but he's got, you want to say juice. I mean, this guy's got juice. They're taping that thing up again, whatever he had to do to get up for this game. He's going to do it, and he's willing to put his body on the line. There's a lot to be said for that. Three points over the last two games, 14 points in the first half for the Atlanta Falcons. Laura Oakman had a chance to catch up with both head coaches. What'd you find out, Laura? Urban Meyer told us this week, I'm OK if we lose to a better team, but not if we beat ourselves. And he echoed that at the halftime, and he said, penalties right away that's what he went to he said defensively we're playing our tails off offensively talking about that juice he said we need a big play we have no big plays on this offense as for arthur smith he told us he was looking for a fast start got it now he said we got to stay at it play smart play efficient they're going to play soft zone we need to take what's there and we need to take advantage kevin Laura, thank you very much. The wild card scrambled and finds the Falcons right in the mix. The current NFC wild card leader, the Rams, at seven and three. And then after the Rams, the race for the number two and three spots: five and five, five and six with three teams, four and six, Washington and Atlanta. Every one of these teams, and I know you're accustomed sometimes when your team is four and six to be like, "Oh, we're out of it. It's over." It's not over anymore for your four and six teams. They are still very much in playoff mode. And I promise you, Arthur Smith, Matt Ryan, and the rest of this Falcons team is thinking the exact same thing. I know it because they said it this week when we talked to him. And you nailed it again, Kevin. I mean, three of those teams right there are in the NFC South, right? You got the Saints, the Panthers, and obviously the Falcons. I mean, they're all right in the mix. Now, I'd imagine one of those teams just tanks the rest of the way. One of them, not on purpose, but just something happens. Either a player goes down, multiple players go down. I mean, COVID's still a real thing out there. Guys are missing games because of that. I mean, somebody's going to eliminate themselves. It's just the way it ends up. So two of those teams in the NFC South are really going to have a shot, and Atlanta's trying to be one of them. Jacksonville won the toss and elected to defer, so they're going to have the football to start this second half. Jadon Mickens is the deep man. Can he provide the big play that Urban Meyer was looking for? Mickens stopped at the 21-yard line. And Trevor Lawrence on his way back out. First 10 career games. And you see the numbers of Matt Ryan and Trevor Lawrence are very similar. Completion percentage, pass yards per game, touchdowns, interceptions. The biggest difference is the record. And Mark, you know this. That's a lot about the guys that are around you as a quarterback, not necessarily everything that's about you, the quarterback. Yeah, remember Roddy White and Tony Gonzalez? <laughs> remember some of those players they had in Atlanta? 
little different roster for Trevor Lawrence as he stepped into this position. So I think it's important we keep that in mind. And for the first time since the fumble, James Robinson back in the backfield for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Robinson gets the carry. And Robinson stacked up at the 25-yard line. That's his 10th carry. 44 yards for Robinson in his bounce back from a knee and heel injury. But now he's going to split out wide to the top of your screen on second down. Lawrence over the middle. Catch is made and a broken tackle and a first down out near the 40 for Tavon Austin. And that's where Tavon Austin is so deadly in his run after catch. He's so quick and so shifty, they can't get their hands on him. And a little pace now for the Jaguars to the 39-yard line. Robinson the carry once more. Stretch into the outside and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Shoved into the bench by A.J. Terrell and Brandon Copeland. This offensive line for Jacksonville really trying to establish a little dominance here early in the third quarter. Just building a wall basically for Robinson to run behind and give him a, giving him a chance to make it to the sidelines before getting touched for four yards on a on a first down play after an earned first down the play before. He's telling them to block the corner, they're running right. Down there's that run to the right side, and the tackle made not by the corner, <laughs> but by a day Ogandeji. We got into the make the stop of the 46 yard line. So they got the corner block. <laughs> they got the corner block, thankfully, because Trevor said, hey man, go block the corner, go block Terrell. He was telling his receiver who was in motion, he said, corner, corner. <laughs> and reminding him to go pick up AJ Terrell. Look at him. <laughs> well, that tells me he knows what the run block is supposed to look like, and that's not easy for young quarterbacks. Credit to Trevor Lawrence. Third down and three. Falcons rush five. Lawrence throws, and it's in and out of the hands of Marvin Jones Jr. He made a one-handed diving catch in the first half. Couldn't pull this in. And he's going to run a little slant. He's going to get a little rub from his inside tight end right there. Oh, Terrell just makes a good play trying to break that thing up. One of Trevor's former teammates ending the drive for him. to put it away. Yeah. Yeah. Williams saying get away. It will bounce out of bounds. Just shy of the 10-yard line and a timeout in Jacksonville. The beaches of Jacksonville. Just a stone throw away. Kyle Pitts is at the top of every opponent's scouting report. Two targets today has not had a catch in this ballgame. Came in with 43 catches for 635 yards on the year. First down and 10 at the 12. Looking for Pitts, not open. Over the middle, Russell Gage is, and Gage with a first down across the 25 to the 27. But you saw the first look was again to Kyle Pitts. And that's the way it's been all game. Matt Ryan is trying to get him the football. Got caught right before... The end of the first half, forcing it to him and threw an interception, but they're trying to get the ball to him. Jacksonville's doing just a great job of covering him for a run to the right. This is Patterson. That run to the right picks up five yards. They have to change their calls. Because you're picking him up from all the way up. Picking him up from all the way up in the box, man. He said Georgia, Georgia, and my guess is. Georgia to the right, Atlanta to the left. I don't know. I'm going out on a limb here. But Georgia's got the R, Atlanta with the L. You don't want to overthink this thing, right? And overcoach this thing. Remember, we're just football players, okay? We're not going to balance your checkbook here. Can I have my checkbook back, by the way? Sorry about that request. <laughs> Second and five. Quick toss to Keith Smith. Smith barreling over tacklers. He's got a first down. He ran over Andrew Wingard and got the first down, a pickup of 10. Look at this vicious stiff arm to the turf. Keith. Oh, and, and I loved, I mean, this guy was in Dallas, Dak's rookie year. I was there helping as a mentor with Dak. 
but he was just such a stud and so willing to do the dirty work and every once in a while he gets a chance to touch the football and he sure made the most of it. He's already got a career high in rushing yards this year at 31. From the 41 yard line, Ryan to the sideline. Patterson with the catch, slips through a tackle down the sideline and Patterson ducks out at the Jaguar 39. Nevin Lawson had him right near the line of scrimmage. He picked up 20. And watch this, this quick little hitch route. Six yards and Patterson even comes back down the stem just a tick to give Matt Ryan an easy throw. And that's the most important thing, those yards after catch. And you can only do that when you get an accurate throw from the quarterback that allows for the run after catch. It's in motion. First down and 10 at the Jaguars 39. This is Goldman with the carry, and that hard in the hole by Miles Jack, who still in his sixth year can bring the lumber. Ten minutes to go in the third. 14-3 Atlanta, second and eight at the 37. There's Kyle Pitts all the way on the outside. They're moving him all over the field just to try and get him to football. Ryan, look in that direction. There's the first catch for Pitts. They finally got it to the talented tight end, and he takes it inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. You're going to see him run just a five-yard under route. Boom, with the corner route over the top. Matt Ryan reading the corner, and the inside linebacker right there, and Pitts just cuts off the linebacker and gives Matt Ryan an easy throwing lane. And you see why they try and get him the football. I mean, after the catch, this guy's a full-on receiver. Forget the tight end tag. 19 yards on that play. Matt Ryan four for four on the drive. First down, Kerry Goldman gets tripped up. For Kyle Pitts, his first catch of the day. And First six games burst onto the scene. Now, remember early in the season, the conversation was, when is this guy going to score a touchdown? Fantasy owners couldn't figure it out. He still only got the one. But the last four games, with Calvin Ridley having to take time to tend to his mental health, he's become the number one target on the opponent's scouting report. Absolutely. And these defenses, they stay up late every night of the week. And they know exactly who's getting the football. They won't allow it. Second and nine, quick toss to Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus down near the 12-yard line. Five-yard pickup on the play. And this will set up a third down and short for Atlanta, trying to put points on the board midway through the third. And Atlanta can settle for three, and that would be huge for this Jaguar defense if they could somehow hold them to just a field goal because Atlanta's marched this ball right down the field and came out with the juice that we were talking about at halftime that the Jaguars desperately needed. This is what Arthur Smith had told Laura he wanted to see it, making the plays, progressing down the field. It's exactly what they've done on this drive. Third and four at the 12. Ryan with time, throws, caught, touchdown. Russell Gage, his second of the year, and the Falcons up 20 to three. And just a stack look, you're gonna see Zacchaeus run through. The defender and Russell Gage just kind of sneak underneath them right there, creating a natural pick lane once again. They knew they were getting man to man and an excellent call by Arthur Smith. Ball just a little bit behind him. Matt, Matt Ryan got away with one there. He'd like to have that ball on the front number, but fortunately he was so open, he was able to uh, turn back and snag that thing and waltz in the end zone. Young Way Koo with the extra point. That is good, 21 to three. Atlanta, Matt Ryan's first touchdown pass in the last three weeks. Reason to celebrate for Atlanta. One of the great left tackles in the last quarter century, Tony Baselli, anchored the Jags offensive line from 1995 to 2001, made five Pro Bowls, three All-Pro teams. Now works for Jacksonville. There he is. What a stud. For their radio broadcast. Can we please, he's a semifinalist again, can we please put this man into the Pro Football Hall of Fame? I, oh, I, he, was, he was a dominant left tackle. And the only thing that derailed our friend Tony was injuries at the end of his career. This man was 
and is a great human being, but a terrific left tackle as well. Well, on Saturday, Jim Harbaugh leading the fifth-ranked Michigan Wolverines. They're going to their first ever Big Ten championship game. They'll punch their ticket to the playoffs if they win against 16th-ranked Iowa. Coverage starts 7 p.m. Eastern. You'll find it only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. How about Jim Harbaugh and the Cactus, baby, getting it done against Ohio State. What a big win. Trevor Lawrence, no touchdown passes in the last four games. Only two games in his Clemson career without a touchdown pass. Mm. It is a tough, tough go for a rookie quarterback in Jacksonville this year. First to 10 at the 25-yard line. Carlos Hyde trying to stretch it to the outside, and he'll be chased out after a little game. Give him two, and it's second down. And the biggest thing he's got to do, obviously, they need to try and get points. They got to put together a drive and get down into the red zone and execute. But for him, it's the game within the game. How many completions can I get in a row? How perfect can my footwork be? How quickly and efficiently can I get through my reads? That's where his focus has to be right now. The play fit with time over the middle, deflected away. That's an excellent defensive play by Fabian Moreau, knocking it away from Marvin Jones Jr. A great defensive play. And Marvin Jones Jr. is gonna go all the way across the field and watch Fabian Moreau. This is just like the other, oh, you see him try and get away with a little push. At the top of the route like that, when you have a crossing route, it's drawn as just one straight line. But if you're a good receiver like Marvin Jones Jr., you put a little pastry on the top, right? That little move he tried to give him, a little hot sauce at the top of the route. Unfortunately, Fabian Moreau knew it was coming and it was all over. So now third and eight for Jacksonville. Jaguars four for eight today on third down. Falcons rush four. Lawrence checks it down. Tight end has it. It's O'Shaughnessy and James O'Shaughnessy short of the first down. At the 32-yard line, Michael Walker and A.J. Terrell on the stop of the punt team coming on for the Jaguars. They had all the routes, passing lanes covered up. Trevor Lawrence just gets rid of that thing into the flat quickly. It was the only thing left to do on these third and longs. They found themselves in these situations too many times to be an efficient third down team. Logan Cook to punt it away. Short punt. Williams at the 23. Avery Williams. Much room to run there as the Jaguars with good coverage. Porterman on the stop will step aside from Jacksonville. We were talking to Matt Ryan this week. He said, we've got to get back to the basics. You can see how fired up he is with this, the performance today. 152 yards, a touchdown, an interception, rating right around 84. Is that a Hall of Fame game? No, but it's a much improved performance for Atlanta than what he's seen the last couple of weeks. They're back to that basics area. First down and 10 at the 27-yard line. Toss play for Darrell Patterson trying to turn up the field, and he'll get two to the 29-yard line. Matt Ryan, the veteran, Trevor Lawrence, the youngster. And Laura, being a rookie quarterback's not easy. Nobody knows that better than Matt. No, we talked to him about the pressures of being drafted and immediately stepping into being the face of a franchise. The 14-year vet sounded actually like a 40-year vet, saying it's so much tougher now for Trevor Lawrence, saying, when I was drafted, I had a flip flow. Now there's so many avenues to hear outside noises saying everything is all on your screen if you want it. He said, I'm a dinosaur. I don't go near it because I don't want to hear it, the good or the bad. We can all understand that. No, no question about that. It's a it's a different era when you're moving into that high profile position as Cordero Patterson ends up a yard short of the first down. And, and Matt said, you know, look, our group is a lot younger than some of the groups I've been around. I didn't have to say a lot when I was around those vets that I was around. You've talked about them earlier, Mark, but when you're with a younger group, you've got to remind guys around them how good they are. It's harder for Trevor to do that. He's the young guy in that room trying to remind everybody, hey, we can get this done. When you're the voice of the team at 22 years old and there aren't the veteran mainstays there that have seen what it looks like to make a playoff run, to get to a Super Bowl or deep in the playoffs as Atlanta gets stuffed here on third and short. It's very difficult for Trevor Lawrence to be that voice. And watch this push by the defensive line for Jacksonville. 
was really Jenkins number two holding up from the safety spot. And making that play, Rayshon Jenkins, keeping this thing alive for his offense and getting Atlanta off the field. But back to Trevor Lawrence, I mean, he doesn't have anyone who knows with that experience around him who knows what it looks like, right? Because guys have to do it. It's just like riding a bike. Once you do it, you got a little confidence and you never really forget how to ride a bike. But Trevor doesn't have those resources around him right now. And that's what these next couple years have to be for them. They got to draft well and they got to acquire veteran talent, veteran talent that experiences success, that it has experienced success in the league. Jadon Mickens with a good return out near the 30 yard line. Jaguars defense gets the stop, keeping hope alive as the Jags come back on the field on offense. When you're two and eight, miscues are kind of the way of life. A long pass when they thought it was a penalty against the defense, a turnover. James Robinson offs it up, turns into points for the Atlanta Falcons. A sure touchdown. Dario Grubawali is only play that we've seen out there for Urban Meyer's team. Can't pull it in at the two yard line. It's just been the inability to make those plays. And Jacksonville held up at a 21 to 3 deficit with 4.06 to go in the third. First down and 10 at the 28 yard line. Lawrence with time to the sideline, coming back to get it. Boy, he had all day to throw it. Laquan Treadwell helping out his quarterback to come back and get this one to get the first down. Whoa, Trevor Lawrence. Living dangerous back there, cooking steaks in the backfield. Look how long it takes for this route to develop. That's not the way it's drawn up, by the way. That ball's supposed to be caught over defenders, but look at Trevor pumping, pump faking again, and finally getting the ball upstairs to Treadwell. Lady. On first down and 10, again a play fake. Wants to get it to Robinson, he does, and waiting on his front porch was Ogandeji to just bury him at the 37-yard line, a loss of four. You see him rush from the bottom of the screen right there, just sneak through the line. He's such a big guy, he gets skinny in a way. I mean, he gets his shoulders in between linemen and sneaks through. I don't know how he does it. Like Santa Claus fitting through a chimney there. It's impressive. Second down, hole this time for Robinson. Skips through a tackle, and Robinson out near midfield. Good run this time for James Robinson and the Jaguars to pick up 12 and give him third and manageable. And look at the vision of Robinson seeing that. Gaping hole in the line of scrimmage right there from Taylor's right tackle. 75 just manhandling defensive linemen, throwing them out of the club and giving them an easy running lane. When they execute across the board, they sure are an effective unit. And now third and three as a result of that 12-yard run. Toss play, Robinson trying to get to the edge. Got a block, got a first down. Taylor again leading the way. There's a reason that Jawan Taylor has played in every offensive snap since 2019. And watch him seal the edge right here on Deion Jones. You're going to see the motion man tight end. Boom. Collapse the edge right there and give Taylor a chance. Number 75 to go throw on, on uh, a smaller corner right there. Hawkins. Ooh, Hawkins didn't want any part, <laughs> any part of that action. He was in the wrong weight class for that matchup. On first down, Lawrence looking deep for Treadwell. Jump ball and Treadwell can't pull it in. A.J. Terrell there, and Terrell still down after that jump ball along the sideline. But this would be a costly injury for Atlanta. Looked like he landed a little funny. Terrell going way upstairs, stays down on the sideline. We're back in a moment. And Trevor Lawrence taking a shot on his Former teammate A.J. Terrell on a go ball, and he just landed awkwardly on the cleat of the wideout. He did walk off. It like it hurt a bit. Juan Treadwell's cleat bending up, and it got right into the side of A.J. Terrell. Chris Williamson in now at corner on second down and 10, and Robinson, oh, he found a little crease. Didn't look like there was anything there, but that's why James Robinson 
was such a find last year as an undrafted FCS All-American. He was able to find that hole. And watch this quick little cut right there. Boom, feeling the backside cut lane in the last second. And, goes, and Lawrence on third and one with the keep and the first down. It looked like there was some confusion on the right side of the line between Fowler and the defensive back as to who's going to cover the edge. And Trevor Lawrence took advantage, scrambled, scampered for a first down. And the Jaguars cash in and get into the end zone for the first time today from the 28-yard line. Over the middle, sliding catch made, first and goal, Jacksonville. James O'Shaughnessy catches the dart from Trevor Lawrence for 21. Trevor Lawrence living dangerous here, threading balls through the needle there. Whoo! I mean, the check down looked like the sure option. Defense took off and he found the receiver. On first and goal, Tavon Austin, leaping grab, got the toes in for his first touchdown since 2019. Those toes, there's one, two, it's golden. And even a third, in case you wanted a third toe down. They just tie everything down with the tight end right there, number 80, O'Shaughnessy, and run Tavon Austin right behind him. And Trevor Lawrence, I mean, for a young kid in his 11th start, to put that ball upstairs in the back of the end zone, I know for a fact that's a Brian Schottenheimer staple. He's having guys run in the back of the end zone and reminding the quarterback that ball has to be face mask or higher, almost near that goal post, which is about 10 feet high. But you need those guys to go up and grab those footballs way up in the air to make sure nobody underneath tips that ball. Try for two, little confusion on the Falcons defense. Warren's trying to take advantage, he does! James O'Shaughnessy! Put two more on the board, and the Jags within 10 late in the third. Just a quick out route from the slot. You're going to see a little stutter at the top and then break out. And the most important thing, these are two really good throws. Three, really, because he hit the guy up the seam to set up the touchdown pass, which was another dime. Trevor Lawrence is working on three great throws in a row. And as soon as O'Shaughnessy turns, that ball's out of his hand. There was, this, there was the uh, seam ball. Here comes the touchdown upstairs, the only place he could have put it, forcing Tavon Austin to get up to the second level, right? That was sweet, man. Trevor Lawrence is on fire, three in a row, and O'Shaughnessy, welcome to the club. <laughs> Helping out with two big catches in that three-play sequence. Tavon Austin, his first touchdown catch since December 15 of 2019. He was with Dallas against the Rams. Jaguars play the Rams next week on Fox. But without Jamal Agnew, without DJ Chark, they'll be looking for somebody to make plays. Tavon Austin made a play, and Trevor Lawrence with terrific arm action. He was zipping it all drive, and the Jaguars are within 10. Avery Williams working it out. Williams looking for the sideline, yanked down at the 30 by Rayshon Jenkins. This week on Thursday Night Football, Dak Prescott leads the NFC East leading Cowboys to the Big Easy to take on the Saints. It all kicks off at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. So a little life from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Will it translate to the defensive side of the football with 14 seconds to go at the third? This is where you gotta play complimentary football and get this Atlanta offense off the field immediately. It's down at 10. Davis up the middle, plunges across the 35, giving six on the carry. And that will take us to the end of quarter number three. Little drama left in this one, thanks to the Tavon Austin touchdown grab and toe tap, bringing the Jaguars within 10.
NFC South race is tightening. Buccaneers are losing right now. If the Falcons can hang on, they're only two games back of first place in the South. Jaguars trying to get their third win of the season as we start the fourth quarter. Matt Ryan to the air, throws it short. Catch made by Russell Gage, and that'll get a first down for Atlanta to the 42-yard line. Score by quarter. You see Atlanta with a touchdown in each of the quarters. Jacksonville, though, feeling a little bit of momentum after that excellent drive capped by three terrific Trevor Lawrence throws. Well, no doubt. I got some extended family out here in Jacksonville, but Aunt Nancy and Uncle Pete, hang in there. You picked the right guy. I saw <laughs> everything on that last drive that I needed to see out of my rookie quarterback who's going to be the future of this franchise. He nailed the seam route. He nailed the quick play action. He was on fire. Now the defense has to help him out and get him the football back. And Gage breaking through a tackle, and he's got a first down tossed out of bounds in Jacksonville territory near the 44. Tyson Campbell had a shot at him, and he couldn't bring him in. And look at all this space outside. Too much space, in my opinion, for a quick little now route. And Matt Ryan, look, he saw it out of the corner of his eye and signaled to the wideout. They're on the same page, and essentially it's just an extension of the running game. They're running a running play, and with that kind of space, he took advantage and made a pick. 43-yard line, first down. Here's Patterson trying to get outside, and right around the ankles, Malcolm Brown with the tackle. Just one yard for Cordero Patterson. He has 13 carries, Mark Sanchez, for 98 yards. Cordero Patterson has one 100-yard rushing day in his career. Came in 2014 against the St. Louis Rams. But listen, I think he's got a shot to get it today because they're trying to just milk this clock and get some rushing yards under their belt. Second and nine. Blitz coming, Ryan throws it short and incomplete. Pressure in his face, brings up a third down after we check in for a game break with Marissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Bucks down 24-14 to the Colts when Leonard Fournette takes it in for his third of the day. Coming into today, he had four touchdowns, got three so far. Bucks down by three. Kevin? Good ball game in Indy, becoming a good ball game here. Biggest defensive play of the game coming up for the Jaguars, and Jax fans trying to get behind the defense. You hear Matt Ryan saying flipper. He's flipping the protection to account for safety pressure coming off the edge there. Four-man rush. They back off that pressure, and he throws it behind his tight end. Kyle Pitts, a rare opening for the rookie tight end who has just one catch on the day. Matt just missed him. Just a shallow crossing route that he's normally nails on. Not sure if he was expecting him to slow down, but Kyle Pitts felt green grass. It's definitely zone coverage, so sometimes these shallow crossing routes have rules attached to them where, hey, if you get zone, slam on the brakes and give me your numbers, I'll throw it to your inside shoulder and you knife up the field. But a lot of times that's tough when the defenders blow out of there and there's so much green grass. It's almost impossible for these wideouts to slam on the brakes. Nickens waiting for the fair catch. He makes it at the 10. Jaguars offense coming back. Frustration from the veteran Falcons quarterback. Atlanta still up 10. 24 straight games for the Jaguars scoring fewer than 30 points. It's the longest active streak in the NFL, but they don't need 30. They need 22. Yep. As of right now, would be enough to win this football game. Worst field position of the day. Starting at their own 10 yard line on first down. Quick toss. Treadwell with a blocker in front. And Treadwell's got a first down out to the 21 yard line. Last drive, little confidence for Trevor Lawrence. Oh, and this was so nice. This three place and four place sequence. First seed. Scrambles for a first down, then nails just a strike through two defenders over a linebacker under a safety, then puts this one upstairs. Like Brian Schottenheimer taught him, I'm sure, in so many drills in practice. I mean, he used to go out there with broomsticks and, and other obstacles to throw over just to teach me how to throw these balls in the back of the end zone, and it's clear he's got the message across to his quarterback. Robinson into the arms of Ogan Deji. Picks up three. Meanwhile, Matt Ryan on the sideline. They're looking back at that Kyle Pitts play that he missed and clearly frustrated. He hasn't had a very many opportunities today, Mark, to get it to his talented tight end. You're right, and when you do have opportunities, you can't afford to miss. 
Lawrence, backside pressure hit as he throws, and Robinson, with a one-handed catch, and then breaks the tackle. Robinson out of bounds near midfield. Michael Walker had a shot at him, and Robinson just tore away. You're going to see Trevor Lawrence big and strong stay in that pocket, hang in that pocket to the last second, and just give his, uh, his running back a chance. That's all he needed to do, because these guys can do the rest, and that's what Coach Urban Meyer was harping on. We're missing these kind of plays because we don't have those players consistently in the lineup, but you see how competitive they can be when they have the right guys in the right position. 26-yard pickup, first down at midfield. Here's Carlos Hyde with a carry. Hyde ran into his own blocker, and that slowed him up before Richie Grant could get there to make the stop. Andrew Norwell, the left guard, was in that backfield, and Hyde couldn't get around him. And Grady Jarrett just collapsed that right side of the line, forcing Hyde to move backwards. And then they worked so well together because they brought that backside pressure from Grant, number 27. So as soon as Grady Jarrett slows him down, Grant does the rest with the backside of that run blitz, executing perfectly. Second and 11 at the 49. Five wide receivers. On second down, Lawrence will step up into the pocket. Now going to run. Trevor Lawrence on the run, sliding forward to the 41-yard line. Close to the first down, about a yard shot. And I loved him using his legs. It was the perfect time. You see him wanting to be a passer, stepping up in the pocket, looking for every option. I just would have loved to see him have a little more sticks awareness. That's knowing where that first down was and slide just another step later. On third and one, Carlos Hyde. Oh, he breaks through the initial contact and gets the first down. Now it's Grady Jarrett who's the frustrated Falcon. He had him dead to right to the backfield. And that's exactly why I was talking about that dive by Trevor Lawrence. You'd like to see him get that first down so you save yourself this heart attack right here as that ball gets hit in the backfield and almost just stood him up. Oh, and Grady Jarrett just couldn't hang on. Carlos Hyde, former player of Urban Myers at Ohio State, who he loves. Stamper forward. Extending the drive. The Jags got a little momentum, Kev. No doubt about it. 10.05 to go on the fourth clock has stopped. Foye Aluakun was a little slow to get up, so he's now on the sidelines being looked at. Quick note for the Jaguars, speaking of injuries, Dan Arnold, their talented tight end, who didn't have a target last week, was injured on his first target and first catch of the day today. He's out with a knee injury. Tough break for the Jags. See him trying to get up to the line quick and snap it. Here's Lawrence off the play fake to the sideline. First down and more for Treadwell. And Treadwell down inside the 20, and everybody's starting to feel it for the Jaguars. And just a quick little hitch route on the outside for Trevor. Just another manufactured completion, and I loved his use uh, usage of the quick cadence right there. Get up, hit him on the move, and get a naked out the back door. And a false start. First penalty is half. Number 75 offense, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. For either team, first time we've heard of Carl, from Carl Cheffers in this second half. I love that. The less laundry, the better, especially for Jacksonville. It's been plagued by penalties at times, and they seem to come in spurts. Unfortunately, that one right as they're entering the red zone. You can't afford to make mistakes down in tight like this. First and 15. Lawrence will keep again, using his legs more today than we've seen. One of the things Urban Meyer talked about this week was they wanted to get him into areas where he could use his strengths. And watch Trevor just read the outside with the play fake boom. 93 buckles down, looks like he's going to take the back, and Trevor takes off and uses his legs. He knew he had man coverage. He knew he could get free. Second and five, the give on the read to Carlos Hyde at the 10. And he held that ball inside for a while while he kept his eyes. Look at his eyes on the defensive end, really selling it. And even on the next play right after that, he was showing like he was going to run it again, tucking that ball, trying to be a, ma a magician back there with a little sleight of hand on those ball fakes. 
Urban said this week, our staff has got to do a little bit of creativity, which I feel we haven't done. And they're doing it today. You're seeing a lot more of what Trevor Lawrence ran or similar to what he ran at Clemson. Third and one. He'll hand it to Robinson, who's got the first down at the six of Atlanta, first and goal. That's the exact same play literally three times in a row. I'll tell you what, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep running that read option and zone read. And they're running it to perfection. Trevor's faking like he has the ball every time, keeping everybody honest. But they're getting man-to-man -man down in tight right now. They just need one of their playmakers, Tavon Austin, Marvin Jones Jr., even if it's Carlos Hyde or James Robinson, one of their playmakers has to get, has to break free, has to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup. They got to hold up just enough in front and give Trevor a chance to deliver this ball. Both clock in one, they just get the snap off. Looking for running room up the middle with a flag down behind the play, down to the three-yard line. Holding, number 75, offense. 10 yard penalty, first down. Really critical error on the right side of this line. And that's twice now. He gave him a first and 15 earlier. Now he's going to give him a first and 20. Jawan Taylor, that is, with the false start and now a hold. Can't afford to have penalties. That's one of the cardinal sins of the red zone. No sacks, no penalties, and obviously no turnovers. He can end the drive with points. First and goal at the 16-yard line now for the Jaguars. They have all the momentum. Will that penalty be too much to overcome? He's getting, oh, he's getting all that pressure. And a timeout here. Burns a timeout to help his young quarterback. Our Fox NFL doubleheader continues next with America's Game of the Week as Matthew Stafford of the Rams travel to Lambeau to take on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers for the Vikings battle the 49ers. Check local listings for the game in your area right here on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Timeout utilized by Jacksonville. They've got two remaining, 6.58 to go in the fourth, but this game has completely turned from a momentum standpoint. Trevor Lawrence got into a rhythm and this offense got into a rhythm for Jackson. Well, they sure did. They were moving in the right direction. That's towards the goal line for once in this football game. And now they just hurt themselves with a foolish holding penalty. Just put them in a tough spot. Now they're first and goal for the 16. Trevor's got to remember he's got three plays to get in and he doesn't have to throw it into the end zone. His guys can catch and run. Lawrence, pressure coming, in trouble, able to break away. Lawrence throwing on the run for the end zone, and he threw that one away. LaVisca Chenault was back there, but pretty good strength by Lawrence to break away from that pressure. Well, they had it all covered. Trevor does a good job of getting rid of this football once he breaks contain. And most importantly, down near the red zone like this, getting rid of that football before he takes a shot, right, before he takes an unnecessary hit. But O'Shaughnessy's gloved, Treadwell's gloved, and he just throws one out of the back of the end zone to get to second down. Lawrence now on second down. On the run again, throwing on the run, floats it with touch to the back side, and Treadwell can't catch up with it. He was well covered by Darren Hall, and it's third and goal. So close, and Trevor Lawrence almost nails this just a little too much on that football. Momentum was running forward as he was scrambling towards the line of scrimmage, and got a little too much behind it. It's amazing, Mark, in this game, how one penalty can derail all the positive momentum, and the Jaguars are one missed third and goal away from having that penalty take everything away on this drive. Oh, without a doubt, and it just takes the wind out of your sails and changes the play caller's mindset. It makes it difficult. Third and goal. Blitz coming. Lawrence gets away from Fowler. Lawrence looking downfield, throwing for the end zone. He threw it away. It was first and goal, a holding call on Jawan Taylor on a run that got him about two, 
And this holding call on first and goal changed the entire complexion of this drive. There's the hold right there on Taylor. He got beat inside. Tried to hang on to Grady Jarrett a little too long. So now a 34 yard field goal try for Matthew Wright. Well, I gotta say, just three shots at the end zone in a row from the 16 yard line. And that makes it tough on your young quarterback. I would love to see you, you know, throw a slant or two, throw a quick out on first down, give him a chance to just get a completion and, you know, take bites out of that 16 yards. But we'll be back after this and then up 20 to 14. The best quarterback in Jaguars history. Now the quarterback coach in Detroit, Mark Brunel, three-time Pro Bowler. Two AFC Championship games in his nine years, four playoff birds, 144 touchdown passes, still the most in franchise history. Best known, though, for being Mark Sanchez's teammate at the New York Jets. God, he was so good, too. Not just as a player, but he was lethal lefty, man. He had a good best team, lefty, too. In the game, but yeah, that's more important than all that. He was such a good teammate, such a good dad, husband, the whole deal. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Thank you. Tighter game here, 21-14, and now Atlanta trying to protect this touchdown lead. Offset backs behind Matt Ryan, Cordero Patterson on first down, trying to find room over the left side. And Patterson picks up two, Taven Bryan on the tackle. Last drive, Matt Ryan frustrated after he missed Kyle Pitts. He sure was, just a little shallow cross route. It looked like they were on the wrong page. He might have been expecting him to sit down in zone coverage. And Kyle Pitts goes blazing through that window on the move. And ended the drive. Second and eight at the 23. Mike Davison at the running back spot. Play action and flags fly. Motion up front. And Atlanta will back up five. Ball start. Number 76. Offense. This crowd's really feeling it now. They're getting into it. They know it's at stake. They'd love to see their guys win at home here in Duval. Second and 13. Just the third penalty today against Arthur Smith's team for 15 yards. First Falcon with 100 yard rushing yards in the last 22 games, snapping the second longest active streak in the NFL and just his second career 100 yard game. He's lined up as a wide receiver to the bottom of the screen. Ryan looking to the top side where he finds Tajay Sharp, short of the first down, with good yardage, and it sets up a big third and manageable for Atlanta. Well done by. Matt Ryan getting a quick completion on just a nine-yard stop route, putting that ball on the outside number towards the sideline, giving Tajay Sharp a chance to get up, get close to a first down. Third down and four. Hits split out to the bottom of the screen. Only one catch today for the rookie tight end. They'll bring pressure on third and four. He fires to Pitts, who makes the catch, hanging on through contact, and has a first down for Atlanta. Matt missed on this throw. Pitts saves him right here. Whoa, look at how quickly he cradled that ball and got it close to his body, so Campbell couldn't get a hand on it. That was huge, but you saw Matt Ryan. He got fooled a little bit by the pressure. He thought. The weak side linebacker was coming. He adjusted the protection, and that left a free runner in his face from the front side. The fact that he got that ball off with the free runner and Pitts secured it was an absolute miracle. First down, here's Patterson again, trying to stretch to the outside, breaks the Josh Allen tackle, and then into the power, running out of bounds at the 40-yard line, bowling Nevin Lawson over to pick up six. at the end of this thing. Here goes Keith Smith. And watch right. Bam! Ooh! 
I mean, he's a big dude. These corners don't want any part of that. Ah. Career high now for Cordero Patterson with that run. 106 yards rushing, averaging over seven yards per carry. What a day he's had with the truck stick. There he is again, Patterson lowering the pads. Not much there this time. Maybe two, and it brings up third and two. When we're done here, we will send you to Indianapolis for bonus coverage of Tampa Bay and Indianapolis. Four-point game there, seven-point game here in Jacksonville. And a giant third down. Trevor Lawrence wants the ball back. Needs his defense to get a stop. Ryan with time, shuts down late, pass deflected away from Mike Davis, and flags down in the secondary. Are the Jaguars about to give the Falcons another first down? I thought Zacchaeus might have gotten held a little bit. That'd be three today, Mark, if it is indeed against Jacksonville. Prior to the pass, holding number 21, defense, five yard cut in the end, automatic first down. Evan Lawson, you'll see him right here running with Zacchaeus, number 17. A little too much, obviously, he's got him to the ground. And that's just a, a costly mistake by the defense. He nailed it, Kevin. That's three drive extending penalties. And if you're Urban Meyer, that is frustrating. From the 47 on first down, Mike Davis hopping into Jaguars territory at the 48-yard line. Jacksonville with two timeouts left and the two-minute warning. And Urban Meyer is going to have to start thinking about when you use those timeouts on the defensive side of the football with his team down a touchdown. No doubt, a golden opportunity, just absolutely wasted away. Three first downs by penalty, all have been on either third or fourth down today, Mark. It's, it's costly errors like that that cost you games. And they sure have, and that's how you end up with two and eight. Silly mistakes like that. Down and five. There's that run by Davis and trying to push the pile forward. He may get a yard, and there's that timeout used by Jacksonville. They have one remaining. December 22, 1996, Jacksonville needed to win to get into the playoffs. Jags started well. Mark Brunel scampering for the 11-yard touchdown run, as he was wont to do. With the Jaguars clinging to a two-point lead in the waning seconds, future Hall of Famer Morton Anderson missed a 30-yard field goal for Atlanta. Jacksonville held on. They ended up in the AFC Championship game that year and lost to the Patriots. But that was a unbelievably talented Jaguars team. And that's where Jags fans want to get back to. That was such a rapid rise for that expansion franchise, surrounding themselves with terrific yeah. talent. They sure did. They acquired talent quickly from the 95 season to get to 97 with all those players. But don't forget, it was 2017 where they're in the AFC Championship game against the Patriots again up in Foxborough. Blake Bortles at the helm. And now a timeout has to be used by Atlanta before this critical third down and four from the 47-yard line of Jacksonville. And you know this is such a critical play. Mark Sanchez, Arthur Smith right now talking with his quarterback, Matt Ryan. What do you look for on third and four here? It's kind of that gray area where a run maybe doesn't get done. Yeah, a run could leave you a tick short. It's not like you're going to run the zone read with Matt Ryan, but they do love those short, quick little play action strikes. Don't be surprised if they try and go to that well again. But I mean, they've had success just running the ball. You see they're lining up and empty. Here comes Mike Davis motioning back to the backfield, I would assume. Here it comes. And they're doing that just to figure out whether it's man or zone. And you see Miles Jack saying, hey, I got 28. That tells me they're in man to man coverage. There's Kyle Pitts one on one. They're down in four. Ryan throws, batted away 
from Zacchaeus. Tyson Campbell, the rookie, with an outstanding defensive play. And Jacksonville will have one more shot. Well, that's exactly what they wanted. They had slants across the board. Atlanta knew they were going to get man-to-man -man coverage. And Campbell, I mean, Campbell's been all over it today. He had the interception at the end of the first half. He's got a couple of pass deflections that have got this offense off the field, and he's been all over Kyle Pitts or whoever they put on him. What a standout day for number 32. Orsted will punt. Signed this week when Dustin Colquitt went on the COVID list. Had punted seven times in seven, had punted seven games rather for the Jets this season. Long time New Orleans Saints punter spent 12 years with the Falcons' rival in New Orleans. Jadon Mickens is the beat man. The flag is thrown. Offense number 21. Five yard penalty, four count. Did you say offense number 21? He did. Sure about that? Well, Deron Harbin is the up man in the punt formation. I think they should have signed him to the punt. Don't, don't put him on the other guy. <laughs> I hate on punters, Mark Sanchez. <laughs> and now movement up front. The Jaguars all pointing up front. And the Falcons are back Foster, up again. Number 92, offense, five-yard penalty, four down. Jacksonville's very excited about that. I don't know that that's going to make a huge difference in what the Falcons are trying to do here. No, not necessarily, but... Gives this crowd a, just more of an opportunity to get into it. <laughs> and maybe that's what they're looking for. No, I mean, it just gives your opponent more room. If anything, it just helps more stick. But they got the two-minute warning, Jacksonville, that is, and the timeout. They got plenty of time for Trevor Lawrence to make a little noise here and mount a comeback. Mickens will field the punt at the five-yard line. Makes a move to the 10. Mickens to the 15. Trying to find room to roam. And the ball popping out at the end of the play, covered up by Jacksonville. Frank Darby knocked it out as he was on his way down. And it looks like Jacksonville was able to jump on that football. Made a great move initially to break contain. And then this thing got punched out. Clearly a fumble. Come on, tantalizingly bouncing around there. And Chris Claybrooks, fortunate for Jacksonville, he was there. Wow, Johnny on the spot. Brooks take this offense a possession right there critical error so here you go Trevor Lawrence last two drives 7 of 11 94 yards and a touchdown and one timeout plus the two minute warning you drafted Trevor Lawrence number one overall for situations like this and you get this clock to stop nothing wrong with the run here to start this drive off the play fake the toss to O'Shaughnessy who stumbles down and is touched up at the 21 yard line by Brandon Copeland. And that clock will run down to the two minute warning. Jacksonville trying to rally. Can Trevor Lawrence lead his team back at home? Trevor Lawrence, the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft. He was able to do this so many times when needed at Clemson. Was run a lot of times at Yeah, Trails I was just going to say, Clemson. I don't know, because. <laughs> He hasn't had to lead too many two-minute drives. He was out in the third quarter with Sandals eating peanuts on the sidelines because they were up by 40 points. This is a great experience for this young quarterback. Second and seven off the play fake. Lawrence will throw wide of his intended target, James Robinson. Third down and seven. Here's the day for Trevor Lawrence, the rookie quarterback. It was a rough start for Trevor Lawrence with the interceptions early, but found his rhythm late, Mark. Oh, he sure did, and he went on a terror on that scoring drive, the most recent scoring drive, and really started picking this Falcon secondary apart with his accuracy and ball placement, and we didn't see it on that last check down. So a reminder, he's got two downs to get this first down. He doesn't have to panic. Third and seven at the 21. Lawrence 
fires and a good adjustment made by Marvin Jones Jr. Leading to his left to get the first down at the 29. And that ball was just an absolute rocket. Get ready to see some crossing routes. One timeout left. Lawrence, it's coming late. It's picked up and he misses O'Shaughnessy in the middle of the field. Just not a ton of reps with O'Shaughnessy. You see him, Trevor was expecting him to slow down in this window right in here. Once the coverage cleared, he wanted him to throttle down and he tried to slow him down with the football. See him trying to hit that back shoulder. But that, I mean, that comes with so much reps and so much familiarity. And unfortunately for Trevor, he just doesn't have that with a ton of receivers and tight ends in this group. No, and O'Shaughnessy's been on IR since week two of the ankle injury just back this week. Second and ten at the 29. Lawrence, the check down dropped by Carlos Hyde. And now third down, 128 to go. And the Jaguars offense spinning its wheels right now. And you need these easy catches. Trevor takes a little speed off of it, gives him a nice catchable ball. And your running backs can be deadly for you. If they catch the football in this two-minute drill, remember when LaDainian Tomlinson, whenever we break the huddle in the two-minute drill, he'd always remind me of his flare control. That was his check down route, whether it was a sneak, a flat, anything, just so I knew if anything broke down, I knew where the back was and I could steal a completion. We're down in 10. Lawrence over the middle, off the fingertips of Laquan Treadwell. And Lawrence perplexed, it's fourth down. I mean, the only place he could really put this ball, they're playing cover two man, two deep safeties, man to man underneath. And Treadwell's just absolutely gloved. Darren Hall with the coverage, number 34, watch him. the ball game right now. Jacksonville on fourth and ten from the 29. On fourth down, Lawrence incomplete, skips it in front of Chenault, and the Falcons are going to hang on in Jacksonville and win it 21 to 14. I think he thought Chenault was going to slam on the brakes a little earlier. I see a happy Matt Ryan and a frustrated Urban Meyer. Trevor pleading his case to Carl Cheffers. I think Trevor thought he was going to slow down a little sooner, closer to the sticks. Chenault took that route a little deep. And he's throwing that off of timing. So he's got to let that ball go before Chenault turns around. See Matt Ryan take a knee and end this thing. So the Falcons will survive a late flurry from Jacksonville. And Atlanta, having lost their previous two games by a combined 68 to 3, will move to 5 and 6 and be number two in the NFC South before they play the leaders next week in Tampa Bay. Carolina to follow. Then they go west to San Francisco before the Lions, Bills, and Saints. The remaining schedule for Atlanta. Not an easy path by any stretch of the imagination, but certainly a path that sees the Falcons enter it with playoff hopes, legitimate playoff hopes at five and six. They do have some winnable games, but those conference ones are so important for them to try and make a late season push here. And that will be the end of the ball game. So Atlanta got the lead and then hung on through the attempted rally by Jacksonville. Jaguars rally falls short and the Jags fall short at home 21 to 14. Matt Ryan and company gets the win 21 14. That'll do it from here in Jacksonville. Now for a state farm game break we go to Los Angeles.